Welcome guys to my most ambitious aquascape yet. You see some Dragonstone over here, you see a 10 gallon tank over here. We're going to combine those two and I'm going to try and make a very complicated kind of aquascape above a level that I've never done before. Now what I'm going to do is take rocks, glue them together to make nice arches and pathways and valleys and things like that and really try and spend a bunch of time, probably a couple days, actually putting this together. Here's some photos of the inspiration behind this idea. So here's the first photo. I love the hanging rocks kind of in the middle, those peaks and points coming down. I don't know if I can incorporate that into my scape. In this blurry photo here, you might be able to see that there's some uh, jagged peaks kind of coming out of the valley in the middle. So the valley is overhung by some jagged peaks. I like that concept. I mean, these fantasy avatar kind of scapes are just amazing. I, I love the hanging stone look there, may do something with that. And this layout here was an IAPLC entry. I mean, just look at it, beautiful. The, the curve of the rocks overhanging, the archway, the little valleys and tunnels on the, the middle and on the right hand side, really, really awesome. I won't be able to create anything this intense, but I take most of my inspiration from this photo here. So all that being said, I'm going to set up like a little rolling table that I'm going to put over here. It may be kind of a long video, so settle in and I hope you enjoy it. Oh, and before we get started here, I have to ask a favor. And I do hate it when YouTubers do this and ask for subscriptions right in the beginning of a video because you don't know whether you like the content. But if this is your third or fourth video that you've watched of mine, I think you enjoy the content. If you're not subscribed, please help me out. Click that little button. All right. Let's get set up over here and get to scaping. Okay guys, this is the best view that I can get you with the best lighting. I know there's a little bit of reflection on the glass, but you should be able to see clearly what's going on inside. As we get going here, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Hyger. First thing that they've sent me is a set of aquascaping tools. Comes in a nice little pouch here. And it also has a little terry cloth here, a little glass cleaning cloth so we can wipe our glass down here and give you guys a nice view of what's going on in the tank. So we've got our cloth here and it's just a basic set of tools. We have our sand spatula here, which I really needed one of. So I do appreciate them sending this toolkit out. You got your narrow end, you got your, your large end, <laughs> broad end. That's the word I was looking for. So in this scape, I think it's going to be important that I use this because I'm going to have some little areas where I need to move substrate around. You have, of course, your tweezers or your pincettes or whatever you want to call them. This is the straight version. You have your curved version of tweezer or angled version, whatever. And then, of course, you have your regular curved scaping scissors here. I want to say thank you to Hyger for providing all this stuff for me. They're also providing the filter for this tank. Now, the filter hasn't shown up in the mail yet. But by the time I figure out where I want the scape to be, I'm sure that filter will be there and we'll use it in the tank, which you will see shortly in the video. The first thing I've got to try and figure out is which of these stones am I going to use? I want height, I think, but I don't know how high yet. And some of these are pretty short. Some of them are what I'm thinking is the right height, like this guy here. But how do you get that? How do you get that set in the tank and it doesn't fall over? That's where it's going to take most of the time is trying to figure out how to get my base in here before I take this bowl of detail stones that I have and really start creating the, the interesting effects. I'm probably going to have to break a bunch of rocks, but I have a lot of pieces here. I got 44 pounds of this stuff, so I should have enough pieces to kind of make what I want. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to break a bunch of these stones and build this with smaller chunks to get kind of the form that I want. But this is good practice. If I ever want to enter one of these fancy contests, um, you're going to have to figure out how to do this stuff. So I'm going to spend most of the day playing with this camera off. Uh, I decided not to do a time lapse on it because why? It's going to be really boring for you. So once I get some major steps here, I'll turn the, the camera back on and give you updates. All right, I've smashed up three different stones here to get better pieces. 
it was very easy just sticking a screwdriver in one of the uh, the little holes here and just tap down with a, a hammer moderate force this stuff is a very soft sedimentary rock and it's filled with clay in the little pockets so it just breaks apart very easy now the only bad thing is I've pressure washed all these uh, a couple days ago and now I have all of this uh, clay that I have to wash out again but we're gonna build the scape first and then maybe wash it I couldn't bring myself to smash up this stone I think it's gonna be the feature stone kind of the big weight of the aquarium and I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet but I think I'm gonna keep it in its whole form as kind of that that statement piece but you can see the smaller pieces that I've broke up here fit much better for the size of the aquarium here and I think we'll be able to do more scaping with smaller pieces here or more intricate scaping rather I'm starting to get somewhere here and I'm gonna point some things out here with my little pointer lush and salty aquariums in a previous video mentioned that the pointer worked out pretty good instead of my fat finger so what we've got is this is definitely gonna be this piece sitting here uh, I do like it we're gonna have to blend it into this area here but this is definitely staying I think all of this is staying what I'm going for is some sort of a tunnel here. I got to kind of maybe break this part off, but before I do that, I've got to get some pieces kind of glued in together. This little hole will get filled in, but I like kind of where we're going here. I'm trying to get an arch going over here. This is our big heavyweight object. And if things go correctly, I should be able to start piecing things in like this. Don't fall, don't fall. And, and get to my, my arch over here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five pieces making that up. I'm going to try this here for shaping because this is such a soft rock. I think I can use this Leatherman tool here with my needle nose pliers and just scrape off areas that I, that I don't want to make more of a, an arch. See, if I was to tap this right here, it would crack and break off this whole piece. Ask me how I know. All right, using the toilet paper trick here, or toilet tissue, however you want to say, and these little tiny liquid super glues that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the uh, description here. This is pretty much how I'm going to put together the whole hardscape. My new Higer tools. The bent forceps that Higer sent me is coming in pretty handy right now to get down in this crack just to stuff that tissue paper in there and secure this piece of rock. All right, update time here. We've got our tunnel that we had talked about earlier, a little archway in there, that's looking good. Starting to get a bunch of pieces of rock all assembled together here. And I'm gonna start building the archway here. Now I want a spiky archway, so we're gonna put some stalactites, is that? Is stalactite from the ceiling down? Or stalagmite. I think it's stalactites from the ceiling down and stalagmite is up. I don't know. I've got my archway done now and uh, it's looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it here. Next step is I'm going to go through here and clean up all these little glue joints. And the way I'm going to do that is just little pieces similar to this that I'm going to glue in. Whoop. <laughs> going to glue this in with like gel super glue. Um, but these little pieces, you get the idea here, stick little pieces in there and that will hide my glue joints, smooth this all out here, smooth these edges out and down in through here and just kind of clean this up, especially in this area here, make it a little smoother, a little more natural. With some detail stones in there, you can see that it's starting to kind of take more of a natural shape here. There are quite a few you may be able to pick out all of the fine stones that have been glued onto the surface or onto the top of the main rocks modified the archway just a little bit there and the next thing we have to do is remove some of the flatness what do I mean by the flatness well if we look it's just a flat wall which is okay so what I'm gonna work on is trying to get some sort of a, an overhang or something uh, slopes down here. Kind of make it look like that structure is uh, emerging from the substrate that's gonna be underneath it.
finished up with the hardscape here. You can see we've got our peak here. We've got a couple of supporting rocks, or not supporting as in structural, but just kind of filler rocks. That makes it look a little better. And I'm going to put a couple more little accents. I don't like this right here. Maybe just a little something to kind of fill that in. Maybe a little peak or something here just for some interest to keep the jagged theme. I don't know over here if it needs something or not. I'll play around, but I'm going to finish down here on the, uh, the foreground area here with some small rocks just to kind of blend this into the base. And then I think we can call it good for today. I added a little peak rock here, secondary rock, a little third rock to kind of blend all this around here. So hopefully that looks better than flat. I don't, it was okay flat, but it just bothered me. I narrowed the path here. This adds a little more tension because it, it goes from a very wide path into a narrow path and you've got this peak hanging down right here. To me, it adds a lot of tension. I think it's gonna look great when we get the cosmetic sand paths going in here. Added some more base detail stones to soften this edge around here. Of course, when we get the substrate in around here, this whole edge will get softer. 52 pieces of stone. All of these little tiny stones in here. It doesn't look like it from a distance, but these are all individual rocks that are glued in there to give it that texture and depth. 52 total stones and one tired Steve. All right, day two of the build here, and as I had mentioned, I'm going to be using this root that I dug up out of my yard, essentially, and I'm going to cut little pieces off and just try and add a little detail. I have zero plan right now on how I'm going to do that. I think it needs something. It needs like some vines coming down to make it look older, ancient, whatever, but I did make a couple changes to this section right over here. Let me show you. All right, not a huge change or anything, but I did add kind of a, another shelf here. It's very subtle, and, and I think I did a pretty good job getting it to blend in. But there are three pieces of stone that were used to just make this outcropping. I've got it blended into the base down here uh, and just kind of tapers up nicely. I think it fits for reference prior to the change. This is where the edge of the wall was, where my pointer stick is here so all of this was added and it just gives it kind of a second shelf to do some planting just a little dimension but the idea wasn't mine so shout out to designs by tk1 on instagram go look them up designs underscore by underscore tk1 and uh he looked at the scape and said uh it needs a little something right there it was a little too flat he was digging the right side here, um, being thin and flat for some visual interest, but uh, he wanted a little beefier uh, left side here. So we did that modification based on his request. If you do like aquascapes and you want to see pretty much an aquascape a day, uh, hardscape setup, go check out him on Instagram. Again, designs by TK1. I did a lot of playing around with the vines or the, the root here and I took most of it out. I had a bunch kind of down over this rock here, but they were too big. If you look at this scape, it looks massive. Even though it's small, the structure gives a sense of just mass, like a big mountain. When I started adding the vines and stuff, it just, it took away from it. it the vines were too big. There's no tree root that's ever gonna be that big. But I did put some in here. And I'm not sure if I want to leave them in or not. I am 50-50 on it. I mean, that would be a very massive tree if we're really going to judge this by true scale. But for an aquascape, I don't know if it looks good or not. What I'm going to do now is cut this foam out. We're going to be just trimming around the rock. So I have an X-Acto knife and hopefully I can get in here, cut this out around here and remove the foam. Mainly for the side here just because... We don't have much room for substrate, and if it shifts at all, I don't want to see any white foam. All right, we got the foam cut out. We're going to be ready for substrate and stuff, but I'm going to take this tank over to the sink, and I'm going to fill it up, drain it, fill it up, drain it, fill it up, drain it, because I know this is going to be one dusty mess, and I would rather 
just do it at this stage, kind of rinse the rocks and everything with the, the sink sprayer. I think it'll just make things easier to do it that way before we start thinking about substrate and plants. All right, you guys ready to finish this scape up? Look what just showed up in the mail. This is our Hyger filter that's going in this. Again, this was sponsored by Hyger. They sent this filter to me for free. So thank you very much, Hyger. Always appreciate the assistance on these builds. Let me go ahead and open this up. We'll do a real quick look at this filter, but if you watch any fish tube, then you know um, these filters, little internals, they all kind of look the same. But let's see Hyger's design. All right, I turned the tank around here so we can have a background for uh, looking at this filter, although it is a black filter on a black background, so probably not gonna be very good. But here's our little filter and our accessories. User manual, but do we really need that? All right, and here you go. Sounds like there's biomedia in there. Yes, there is. A little suction cup here. All right, so there's your pump head. In here's a little chamber of biomedia. We're probably gonna take that out. Looks like there's a sponge here on the bottom. Yep, sponge here. It's not like your normal sponge. It's a very kind of stiff sponge. It holds its shape. All right, so you got pump head chamber number one. Don't lose your suction cups there. They, they just kind of slide in to the back here. And then uh, chamber number two or your bottom chamber and then your accessories. Now let's see if I can get this bio meat. Yes, so you can take the, oh, there's two. Oh, look at that. There's two little uh, cassettes, if you will. You can pop these little guys open, I think. Yeah. Look at that. You can pop these guys open, put your own little biomedia in there. Well, that's pretty neat. When I was rinsing this sponge, I noticed it's a fairly stiff sponge. Hard for you to see on camera. But I bet this filter is pretty powerful because they don't want the sponge to collapse. So they, they have kind of a, a stiffer sponge for you so that it doesn't just collapse your sponge under the pressure. So I'm gonna utilize this. Normally I'm a big filter floss guy and I just take all sponges out and I do all filter floss, but we're gonna run it as Heiger intended here. And we can always make modifications later if we want. All right, so there's our bottom chamber right there. Don't forget to put your little suction cup in there. They're kind of really making sure this is gonna stay because they have four suction cups on the pump head and then one on the bottom there. I'm kind of nervous now for a 10 gallon. This might be too strong of a filter. This is the smallest internal that Heiger makes though. All right, that clips in real nice. Here's our filter floss. We are gonna put that in there. And then finally, our little cassette, ready to rock and roll. All right, I know I'm not gonna do aeration, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. And the little suction cups, we can get rid of that. I'm definitely not gonna do a step down because I don't want more flow, so we can set that aside. These I may be working with here. So placement in the tank, I want it to be hidden as much as possible. This side of the tank is gonna be butted up against that tank, so I'm thinking the filter should go on the left side. This side I wanted to plant stems in the back, so if we move on up to the top, I do believe this little cubby hole back here is where we're gonna stick it. So let's even see if it fits. I planned for it to fit. Oh my goodness, it's like I designed it for this pump. Look at that, perfect. Now if I go down a little bit, Oh yeah. Oh, that's going to be perfect right there. Heck yeah, brother. Okay, with our filter in place, that's the view that we're going to have of the tank. Worked out pretty good. Awesome. All right, we're going to be using Seachem's Fluorite Dark for the main substrate here. The reason being, it kind of looks like crushed uh, dragonstone already. It'll lighten up and get a little more brown once we get it in the tank and get it wet. And for our sand path here, I've got some African cichlid mix. This coarse sand should blend in pretty well to the aquascape.
Well, there we go, guys. Hardscape is finally done. Man, what a project, but I think it turned out pretty good. I'm happy. It's definitely deserty, but uh, that's a change of pace. It turned out a little different than I thought it was going to. The sand is a little bit lighter than I had anticipated, but it's okay. Not a big deal. I think it's going to look great once it kind of matures in the tank a little bit. Let me tell you, this Heiger sand flattening tool was invaluable, and uh, I really don't know how I would have got it done without it. Now, seriously, I mean, not just because it was sponsored, but this little tool, I used to make fun of all of the aquascapers for using it. I'm like, oh, aren't you foo-foo using your little sand flattener? But now that I've used one, let me tell you, go get you one, <laughs> for real. That thing is invaluable. All right, guys, what do you say we get some green in here now and uh, brighten this thing up a little bit? Plant-wise here, I've only purchased two plants for this scape. We have some uh, Anubius Nana Golden here, and we have some Musophilantra species Brownie Ghost. And uh, the Brownie Ghost is kind of hard to see, but the newer leaves get this really almost see-through kind of color to them. Pretty cool. So we have these that I got at my local fish store. And that's all I purchased. The rest we're gonna scavenge from other tanks. Here's the 40 gallon grow out tank and this is where we're gonna start. I am definitely gonna grab all of these little pieces of cryptochorine parva that I have here. We're gonna grab this Anubius Nana, which is on a rock right now, but we're gonna peel it off of there. There's another tiny piece of Anubius Golden here. We're gonna take that. We have some Bucephalandra species unknown that uh, almost perished and I've been bringing it back to life. So we're going to try and salvage some of that. Rotala Atra is going to come with us, at, at least most of it. i got to save some to grow out. And on the other side here, we've got some Ludwigia Mini Red, a Mini Red, <laughs> Ludwigia Super Red Mini. Jeez, couldn't get that out. And over here in the guppy tank, oh, by the way, new setup i've got some studio lights now so things should be looking better that's how i'm keeping your tank nice and lit for all these shots as well as my pretty face when i'm talking and uh, i got a new microphone too so hopefully you saw the audio change in this video maybe it's for the better any hoot moving on we've got the guppy tank here and in the guppy tank i finally finally got this hygrophilia penitifida to to grow it uh it was not doing anything for a long time but i don't think it really is going to fit in the scape much i've got two pieces there i've got one piece here our carpet is going to take over so we're definitely uh, going to run out of real estate here this glossostigma here you can see is just creeping all the way into the plant already so we're going to go ahead and let it keep creeping and we're going to take the uh, hygrophilia out oh got four pieces there's one hidden right there so we're going to pull all that out. I'm going to put them probably around the top here. We'll figure it out. So that's coming out. If I come around over here, I've got some S repins that, again, I thought was not going to make it, but it finally turned around. So I'm going to pull the S repins out. Obviously, you can't even see it in this scape. And once again, the Glosso is going to take over. So we'll pull that little S repins out. If I need more S repins than out here in the Molly tank, I have very successfully transplanted uh, from in vitro into this tank here. This is the most recent scape I've done. If you haven't seen that video, uh, find it down in the list. All right, I'm going to gather up all of the plants here, do a little video montage of me putting them in here, and then we'll get some water in the tank and uh, wrap this video up.
Heck yeah, guys. That's exactly what this scape needed, I think. That weeping Monte Carlo looks amazing. I think it just ties the whole scape together, gives it kind of that ancient look, which is what Dragonstone has anyway, just kind of this really, really old, overgrown kind of landscape, I guess is what we're going for. Different textures with the smaller leaves, goes well with the broad leaf of the uh, Anubius Nana. And uh, hopefully the Monte Carlo continues to, to grow and just kind of drape all the way down. Obviously, I'm going to have to trim this. So if it gets much lower than this, I think it'll just have to snip it off and we can replant it on the top or we can put it back in the grow out tank. But I think there's just the right amount of greenery now mixed in with the rocks. Looking really good. Oh boy. Oh, that's great for the back. Oh boy. <laughs> That'll do. And final touch is going to be adding our Hyger light. I run all Hyger lights pretty much in my fish house. So I don't know exactly the model for this one, but uh, I will leave a link to it in the description. This is the programmable one so you can set, well, you can set it up any way you want. That's the whole idea of programmable, right? All right, I got it filled up just in time. It is 11.45 and 15 minutes, all of my lights are automatically gonna shut off. So let's fire the filter up. Now I did already adjust it to the slow or off position because I don't know how powerful it is. So let's find the plug and plug it in. All right, I've got it adjusted. That's full flow. Cool, not too bad. Let me bring you in closer. One thing I did notice is the position of the flow handle here. So you see, it looks like it would be off, but that is on. And then when this little thing is lined up, then it, it's off, but that to me looks like it should be on. So maybe a little design flaw there, just some honest feedback for Hyger. But that is wide open and she's circulating pretty good. Let's get a plant view here. You can see the stems moving along. So for delicate fish, it might be too much flow but with a convenient flow adjustment, no worries. We'll get it dialed in for whatever fish we do put in here. All right, guys, there's your build on Dragon Valley. And uh, I am definitely pleased with myself. I, I'm going to admit it. I'm patting myself on the back. That was, uh, for me, a very complicated scape to do. And my first go at working with Dragonstone, my first go at gluing rocks together like that. Um, last count was 52 rocks, but then we added some more. I think I'm up probably close to 60, about 60 total stones in that scape. As you see, the water is a little misty here. So what build would be complete without adding a little API AccuClear? Not sponsored, wish I was, but I do use this on every build and any time that my water gets cloudy. And then we're gonna let the Hyger filter do its job. And we'll see what it looks like in the morning because my lights are going to shut off in about three minutes. It's the next morning and of course the API did a fantastic job making the water crystal clear. I have added CO2 which you cannot see. Maybe just barely you can see the CO2 line right back there. Yep, just a little CO2 line there. But now that it's crystal clear, it looks amazing. It's gonna look even better when you see that pop of red peeking over this mountain peak. Peeking over the mountain peak, you know what I mean. Right now our stems are still, you know, settling in and short from their trimming, but once they all grow up and uh, mature, they should look fantastic as a backdrop over this mountain peak. All right guys, as you watch these last cinematic shots here, I want you to think about stocking for me. What do you think we should put in this tank? I'm interested to see your suggestions and I'll probably follow your lead if I like that suggestion. So drop a comment and let me know what you would like to see swimming about in this tank.